Vans come in all shapes and sizes, from the gargantuan large vans like Citroen Relays and Ford Transits, right down to smaller vans like the VW Caddy, the Toyota Pro Ace City, or even the Ford Transit Connect. And then there are vans like this, the Ford Fiesta Sport Van, a van that could only be described as compact. So. Let's give it a Vanarama road test before it blows away in a breeze or gets eaten by a hungry magpie. So I'll be honest, I'm at a bit of a loss of how to start this review because usually I would compare the front end of a van to a car. I would say something like, wow, this front end looks really car-like, but this is actually a car. It's the Ford Fiesta. And ever since there have been Ford Fiestas, there have been Ford Fiesta vans. But in the European market, they only appeared about six or seven years ago. They stayed around for a few years and then disappeared. But now they're backed by popular demand. And probably the best place to start is with what's under the hood. So let's take a look at the engine. There we are, pull the catch inside, come round to the front, find the catch. And there it is. Now this is a one litre petrol EcoBoost engine. Now it's very powerful, returning around 125 PS. Now to put that into context, the Ford Transit Customs two litre diesel EcoBlue engine outputs 130. So you have a lot of power at your disposal. It also returns incredible miles per gallon with a quoted MPG of 56 miles per gallon. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. So let's get this down and start at the front like we always do. Now, the front end is very familiar. It is the Ford Fiesta's front, although this grille, this honeycomb is unique to the Fiesta Sport van. I think it looks absolutely lovely at the front end with this great big splitter, these lines up the bonnet, and these great swept headlights that kind of curl round and onto the top of the wheel arches. It's just really pretty. The 18 inch alloy wheels are also some of the nicest alloy wheels I've ever seen on a van. We were talking about it in the office previously and we just could not stop talking about how nice those are. The side of the vehicle is equally as pretty with these great lines that cut back and forth down the side of the door and these skirts down the bottom just finish it off perfectly. While I'm here, body coloured wing mirrors with the indicators and a quick clear windscreen complete the package at the front end. I mean, before we move on to the back end, a panel van wouldn't be a panel van without panelled windows. At the back, again, it all looks quite familiar, but there are some key differences between this and the standard Ford Fiesta, not least of which is this great big spoiler that runs along the top and that lovely diffuser that runs all the way along the bottom. And just to remind you that you are in fact driving a sport trim level vehicle, the little red dot over the eye there. Just while we're here, I'll show you, there's your filler cap. And there's nothing to pull out, remove or unscrew because Ford's easy fuel adapter is there so you can just shove the nozzle straight in. Now, let's take a look at the one place that this vehicle really differentiates itself from the standard Fiesta, the loading bay. And there it is. It's not as big as you'd expect to find on a normal van, but then it's in the back of a Fiesta. But it is surprisingly large for a vehicle of this size. And as you can see, it's been nicely rubberized with this matting and there are lashing points in all four corners. Okay, let's move on to dimensions. Okay, so this opening is one meter wide and 60 centimeters high. And the length of the loading bay is 1.2 meters all the way to the bulkhead here. It thins just narrowly to around a meter as it goes up to the mesh. At its widest point, back there towards the back doors would be, it's 1.3 metres and it's one metre wide just there by the wheel arches. So as you can see, it's actually got a really good little loading bay and this is capable of carrying 500 kilograms, that's half a tonne of weight in a Fiesta. And they haven't even had to reinforce the back axle to do that. It's just amazing. Right, okay, so it looks great. It's got a nice little loading bay. Let's get on in the front and check out the cabin. And oh, here we are. Well, first things first, this is a lot lower to the ground than any van I've sat in. And that is because it is the Ford Fiesta Sport Van. So it's as high off the ground as the actual Fiesta itself is. And it is sporty on the interior. Quite apart from the fact that you've got these excellent stainless steel pedals down here, they also echo that on the top of the gear stick 
and the handbrake and they put all this very nice red stitching all over the place to show that it is the Ford Fiesta Sport van. Okay, so sporty seats are also a plus here. You've got a passenger seat and a driver's seat that are both exactly the same, nice and sporty with this kind of checkerboard-esque design on the bottom. And if you stick your bottom on there, it's very nice and comfortable. You feel very nice and hugged inside the vehicle. And when you're driving, you actually benefit from being sort of pushed up. You've, you're, it's a very nice driving position. It allows you to see out through the windscreen, even though you are quite low to the ground. Okay, so it's a stop-start vehicle, so you just stash your keys down here, put your foot on the clutch, and then you press the button here to start it up. So, the steering wheel. It's all very nicely leather lined and you've got perforated leather here where you'd be gripping it and it's smooth leather at the top. It's also got a flat bottom so it doesn't smash your knees when you're taking a particularly tight corner. It's also got two sets of controls. On the right you've got your standard menu buttons just above your phone controls and voice control for the SYNC 3 system over here. On the left hand side you've got your speed restrictor and cruise control settings, your volume controls and your mute button. So everything is at your fingertips right here very nice. Over that you can see your dashboard display and it's very nice and very clear, very Ford. On the left hand side you've got your rev counter, on the right hand side you've got your speedometer and between those you've got your oil temperature gauge and your fuel gauge. Now above those you've got actually a very big full colour driver information display which displays the normal information. You've got your fuel consumption, you've got a digital speedo, you've got your lane assist, You've got your music sources, what's going on on your phone. All sorts of information can be fed to you straight there. Very nice, very big screen, very clear. Here's the big screen. Now, this big screen is being put into all of Ford's commercial vehicles. It comes from the cars, so it's no surprise to see it in the Ford Fiesta Sport Van. Now, you can do all sorts of things here. You can hook up all sorts of devices, including your phone, which you can hook up through Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or you can use one of the two USB sockets to plug your phone straight in, and you can control everything there. You don't even need to have sat-nav as an option installed because you can just use your phone's navigation system. Absolutely perfect. If you want to find out more about the SYNC 3 system, this is the same system that they put into the new Ford Transit Custom, and we've actually done a video all about about what SYNC 3 can offer you. So go to our Ford Transit Custom Review on our YouTube channel and check that video out. Check it on the link right here. Below that screen you've got your hard audio controls, skip buttons, play, pause and your levels. But my favourite bit, these rubberized dial switches right here. Very nice, very resistant. The build quality in Fords is very good and, and these are a particular example of good build quality. They feel good, they don't feel like they're going to whiz off and your volume's suddenly going to get really loud. Okay, so just below that you've got your hazard light button, you've got some controls for the vents here which again are nicely kind of framed by this sort of chrome work which you can see all over the place. And below that you've got the indicator light for the passenger airbag which is right here, but you can see if it's on or off, because if you do want to have a baby seat in the front, you will need to turn that off, and you can do that inside the glove box, but I'll show you that a bit later. Below that, you've got all your climate control settings, and this is a personal favorite of mine, the fan dial. When you turn it up, the lights go on. When you turn it off, the lights go off. So you can always tell at what level the fan is blowing. Really nice and really visual. So if you're driving along, you can just have a quick look down. Oh, I need to turn that up, I need a bit more air. You've also got your controls on here for your heated steering wheel, which is great, that's just down here. And both of these seats are fully heated, so your controls are right there. You just press that button, lights come on and they show you how hot it's going. Beneath that you've got a little cubby hole. I put my key in here because actually embossed into the rubber down there is a picture of the key. So I literally, monkey see, monkey do, I just put the key down there. I didn't ask any questions. Behind that you've got a USB connection and to the left of the gear stick you've got a 12 volt socket. Very useful and very nice and easy to get at. The gear stick, as I said, has this lovely leather lining down here. It's got that red stitching, the nice big metal top. It's really nice to use, moves around very easily. It's very sporty as well. Just behind the gear stick, you've got some controls for your eco setting, traction control, and one to turn off auto start stop. But that's a really good way of saving fuel. So why you'd want to turn it off, I don't know. 
Just behind that, you've got a nice slot. And because this is a commercial vehicle, sometimes when you're driving a van for another company or something like that, you'll get given a fuel card. That is a very handy place to put it and is a very nice addition because this is a commercial vehicle. You've got a little tiny cubby down here, which is about the size of a fun size box of Smarties. And then you've got the handbrake, which is very nice and rigid. It's also a really nice shape. I like the fact that it kind of just pops out straight and it's got a very nice leathery grip on it. Again, red stitching and that nice metal button. Very nice and sturdy. You've also got some cup holders down here. Everything's very localized in here. Everything's very close to everything else. And I like the fact that just everything is with arm's reach here. I don't really have to make too much of a hop to do anything. But you've got two cup holders here with nice sprung little toggles inside. I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to cup holders. I like having that sprung little protrusion that holds the cup in place. And these both have them and they're rubberized at the bottom as well, which means that nothing's going to slip around. Behind that, you've actually got another cubby hole down here and you've got another USB socket. This one, unlike this one, which isn't lit up, this one has a ring of light around it so it actually lights up so you can see it and there is another cup holder and that's not all it gets even better there is an actual pen holder at the back of this cup holder right here amazing my mind is blown the rest of the vehicle well there's no real cubby holes and storage apart from the ones that you get in the door which are perfect for holding a bottle but you do get your glove box now just above the glove box that's where the passenger airbag is you've got some of this nice kind of plastic trim a nice metal line across the top here to kind of echo the framing of the vents and things and then just below that you've got your glove box which is actually really nice and roomy at the moment it's just holding the locking wheel nuts but there's this little shelf inside here which is the perfect place to stash your manual. Absolutely brilliant, that's a nice little touch. And you've also got on the left-hand side there, your dial for turning on or off your passenger airbag. So that's that glove box. There's actually another little tidy glove box that I don't think you should really call a glove box. I don't really know what it could hold, but it's, there's a little something over here to stash something, you decide. So there we go. That is the cabin of the Ford Fiesta Sport Van. So far, so good. It looks great. It's got a good loading bay. It's got a great cabin. Let's see how it handles the tarmac. Ah, straight away, everything just feels very nice. I mean, I feel very low to the ground and quite sporty. It's very strange. I do feel a bit like I should be doing this in a car reviewer's voice rather than my own voice you know, kind of, wow, I can't believe how great and fast and sporty this vehicle is. The one litre engine is doing an amazing job of keeping me powerfully stuck to the road. But to be quite honest with you, it really is. It's very, very nice. It's very smooth to drive and it feels completely different to a van. Now, I don't tend to get too excited about driving a car because vans and pickup trucks are cooler. That's just me, that's from my personal preference. But actually knowing that I've got panelled out back windows and a big bulkhead with a mesh above me makes me feel like this is okay, that I can get excited about this, that this is a very nice, if not a little different, uh, sort of an alternative to a van. And that's what it is. It's also really nice to drive. The cabin's very nice. The red stitching just sets everything off and all that leather lining and lovely trim. Just, I don't know, I feel, I don't know, I feel like I'm in a sports car, it's bizarre because I know that I'm sitting in the front seat of a tiny little compact van that's been made out of a sports car. And I've pretty much just talked myself into this one, haven't I? It is a sports car that just so happens to have been turned into a van. And I seriously cannot believe how well this little one litre petrol engine is doing. I can't believe how much power is coming out of it. What I can't wait to do is to get it onto a nice long straight country road and really open it up. Because that is when you'll see just how good fun it is to drive a Ford Fiesta Sport van. I don't understand people who drive automatic petrol vehicles because when you've got a powerful petrol engine, you want to be able to know and tell the vehicle where that power should go. So the six-speed manual gearbox is absolutely brilliant. I mean, the Fiesta's gearbox was great anyway, but now it's in a commercial vehicle for me. It's suddenly taken on this new lease of life. We're driving down a stretch of road at the moment because just at the end of this is the Vanarama Strait. It's not called that, it's got actually a proper road name, but it's a very nice open straight bit of country road and it's a really good place to open vehicles up because the output from this little engine, I just want to see how it happens, where it goes. We've just turned onto one of my favourite roads, a very long, very straight bit of country road, and you can already hear the engine picking up. I'm in third gear, 
holding on to it. I don't want to get too close to the chase car, but there's someone in front of our chase car not letting us get through. Come on, I just want to open this vehicle up. It's so much fun. I've got 130 PS, damn it. I've got 130 PS. Where am I going to put all that power? Come on, I just want to drive this car. Van, it's a van. Sorry, it's a van. <laughs> I mean, it is very powerful and it hugs onto the road incredibly well. There's a couple of moments where you're in a corner going at high speed and you think to yourself, flip it, heck, I'm gonna snake, I'm gonna lose the back end. But actually the Ford Fiesta is a really good platform to build such a sporty little van onto the top of. You know, you can sustain a lot of high speeds. You feel like the gearbox is just aching for you to take it up a notch and, and show you how much power it still has at its disposal really exciting. Pretty much the only issue I can think that people will come across driving the Ford Fiesta Sport van is if, if you're used to the visibility usually offered by a car with the back windows, you don't get any of that. So I've been on some corners that I describe as pretty tight, trying to get out at a junction. It's been really hard to see where I want to go. And that's a bit of an issue. I do find that Actually, with a van, because you have so much visibility, you can sort of crane round, you feel like you're kind of looking around, but at this level and this height off the road, because I'm so low to the ground, it does feel a bit vulnerable. I do feel a little bit edgy, like, oh, I don't know whether I should necessarily be pulling out right now. And reversing out has also been a little bit of an issue as well. There's no sensors on the front or the back, so you don't get any beeping or anything like that. You kind of just have to hope that you've been able to crane round the pillar to see what's coming, but sometimes it does feel a bit squeaky bum time, if you know what I mean. But I tell you what, a lack of visibility when you're trying to park a car or reverse out of a parking space is a small price to pay to sit in a vehicle like this. I mean, look, I don't know necessarily which trades would kind of look at this and snap it up. I'm thinking to myself, florists, maybe dog walkers, because that mesh back over there. I don't know, maybe an electrician, someone doing pricing runs. I mean, hell, even a plasterer could throw a bucket, a mixer, a couple of bags of plaster in here and be absolutely fine. You wouldn't need anything else. You could bundle up some tarps in there, no problem. I mean, to be quite honest, the only thing you probably couldn't do with this vehicle is mount a rack on it and carry a ladder around. The sporty seats are really comfortable. I feel quite safe and secure in here, and I guess that's the point. Driving a commercial vehicle around, you don't usually get sporty seats unless you may be in the Ford Transit Connect at its sport level. But this is nice. This is standard. This is the trim level for the Fiesta Sport van. It's sporty. You get sport seats. Get over it. And not only does it have all the sport styling and trim on the inside, the powerful little engine under the hood, the suspension has also been sport tuned as well, so it's incredibly stiff. There's not too much bounce when you do anything, it's just ugh, hard compression on the road, which is absolutely exactly what you want for a vehicle with this much power. You want to be able to throw it around corners and know those wheels aren't going to be bouncing up and down all over the place. Well done Ford, I'm enjoying this little van. Car, van, car, van car van car stop being such a van car actually that sounds wrong don't put that in well no you can put it in no don't put it in well that was fun i mean really really fun i'm pretty sure if i was racing this against an even bigger van i would be leaving it in the dust i mean there is no way that it could be touched by the competition and speaking of the competition, why don't we have a look at some of the other pure car-derived vans available in the marketplace right now. First up, the Mitsubishi Outlander Commercial. Now this is much bigger than the Ford Fiesta Sport van and it's derived from the Outlander SUV. The same tactics apply. Panel out the windows, level out the back seats, done. Next up, the Vauxhall Corsa van, and this is about as close to the Fiesta van as you can get. And it benefits from a slightly larger payload than its Ford equivalent, but its engine is far less powerful and far less sporty. And finally, the Toyota Land Cruiser Utility Commercial. Now this one is very similar to the Outlander Commercial. This vehicle follows the car-derived van playbook to a T, but there are a few more options to make this vehicle feel just that little bit more personal. And there you go. As you can see, the car-derived van market is niche, but there are some out there. In the end, you'll choose the one you want based on whichever pure car version you prefer. Simple as. 
So how do we finish this one? Well, look, the Ford Fiesta Sport Van is not going to be perfect for every trade. It's not going to be perfect for builders or plumbers or carpenters carrying incredibly heavy loads and very bulky loads. But if you're a florist, an electrician, a dog walker, something like that, someone who's just looking to carry something very small but very heavy, don't forget, this thing can carry half a ton. It could be absolutely perfect. But what if you're one of those people looking for a van and a car at the same time? Well, I think you've just found your vehicle. Just make sure if you do get it, you're ready for all your mates to be going. Where's the rest of it? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. And if you want to find out more about this model's MyKey technology, check out this video. Or if you want to find out more about the rest of the Ford Fiesta Sportvan range, check out our overview.